everyone and welcome to this edition of Super Dwarf Sunday. Today is Sunday, June 14th, 2020. This is episode 45 of Super Dwarf Sundays. I am Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary and this is Tau Seti from Reach Out Reptiles. Today we are going to continue our series on snake enrichment. We're going to wrap up our series on snake enrichment by discussing cognitive enrichment. So first, let's review the five enrichment categories that we've been discussing over the past several weeks. They are cognitive, dietary, physical, sensory, and social. In our previous episodes, we've already covered dietary, physical, sensory, and social. So today we're gonna wrap up by talking about cognitive enrichment for snakes. One of the most widely accepted definitions of cognitive enrichment as it applies to animals, comes from a paper by Clark that was published in 2011, which is that cognitive enrichment engages evolved cognitive skills by providing opportunities to solve problems and control some aspect of the environment and is correlated to one or more validated measures of well being. In another document published by the Association of Animal Welfare Advancement in 2017, Cognitive enrichment is defined as cognitive enrichment involves providing the animals in your care with the opportunity to engage their brain in healthy, stimulating ways and to encourage the expression of normal species typical behaviors. Providing the animals with daily investigatory opportunities, problem solving challenges, and operant training sessions stimulates cognitive engagement that will help to promote their mental well-being. So, no matter which one of those definitions we want to go with while we're talking about providing cognitive enrichment for our snakes, it's clear from both of these that the other enrichment categories that we have previously discussed are already providing lots of cognitive enrichment via mental stimulation for our lovely snakes. The one thing we haven't discussed is operant training sessions. And as an animal trainer and someone who came into the snake world as an animal trainer, this is an area that interests me greatly. If you aren't already aware, snakes share the same basic vertebrate brain plan as the rest of us. The general brain regions found in mammals, including the cerebral cortex, have homologies in reptiles. These include the forebrain, the midbrain, the hindbrain, as well as a structure known as the dorsal ventricular ridge that researchers believe is homologous to the mammalian neocortex. Reptilian brains, including those of snakes, produce dopamine. It's a neurotransmitter that plays a role in pleasure, motivation, learning, and is the seeking chemical. In fact, one of the research studies done on dopamine production in snakes was done on Python regis, I will list references to snake neuroanatomy, all of the papers that I've mentioned in the video description. So here at Behavior Education and at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary, I do a lot of classical and operant conditioning with all kinds of animals, including our snakes. We use the word training a lot, but what training really means is teaching. All organisms learn by experiences and you can think of training as teaching through guided learning. Helping our snakes learn through guided experiences is valuable for many reasons. Training our snakes provides them with mental stimulation, as was mentioned in one of the definitions for cognitive enrichment. Training also provides our snakes with physical exercise. It also allows us to teach our snakes cooperative behaviors. And I find this maybe one of the most important aspects of training our snakes. Co teaching cooperative behaviors means that we are helping them to learn to voluntarily participate in their own care. Giving them choice and control, including the ability to tell us no when they don't feel like participating in something, builds confidence and resiliency in our snakes and it fosters trust between us and our learners. For those of you who are interested in learning more about snake training and animal training in general, I have lots and lots of videos on my YouTube channel and I will be producing more because it's one of my primary areas of work here at Behavior Education. Today, we're gonna get back into the topic of cognitive enrichment. So let's dive into the homework that I signed you two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I did an update video 
And last week we had Tal Seti's first birthday party. So you've had an extra week to do your homework. And the first item of homework that I gave you was to watch the video that was produced by Reach Out Reptiles where Garrett Hartle discussed the platinum gene. I gave you that homework because it's what color Tau Seti is. This is platinum. And he should, as far as I understand from that video, get more yellow as he ages. He sees now one year old, and this is what platinum looks like in a super dwarf reticulated python at one year of age. I mainly said that that video was your homework for fun and so that you could learn more about Tal Seti because if you've stuck with me so far through 45 episodes of Super Dwarf Sunday, I assume that you have an interest in Tal Seti and the work that we're doing with him here. Your homework number two was to read a paper or at least the abstract for the paper entitled Environmental Enrichment Alters the Behavioral Profile of Rat Snakes and it was published in the Journal of Applied Animal Welfare Science in 2006. This paper illustrates how even simple environmental enrichment can improve cognitive development. Animals raised in or living in stimulating environments have increased brain activity, increased synaptic development along with increased synapse activity. And this leads to an increased size and number of glial cells. Environmental enrichment also enhances capillary vasculation, which means that the neurons and the glial cells are provided with extra energy. The paper I ask you to read looks at 16 rat snakes. Tausetti, you're making it difficult for me to produce this video. The paper I ask you to read <laughs> looks at 16 rat snakes. They were divided into two groups of eight rat snakes in each group. And one group was raised in an environmentally standard set of conditions, what some people might think of as environmentally deprived conditions. They had a water dish, one rough brick to assist with shedding, and no substrate. They also had a single hide box. The second group, in addition to all those same items that the standard condition group had, also had shredded aspen bedding, a log that was positioned vertically with a coconut shell on top for climbing and hiding, and they had a moss box slash humid hide. These animals were termed as living in enriched conditions. Each group of animals remained in these conditions for eight months and then they were tested in a problem solving task, an open field task, and a feeding task. And then all of that was followed by a discriminative function analysis. I just want to go over the key points of this paper because I really think it's significant. Even though it's from 2006, I just don't hear it being widely discussed in the snake world or in herpeticulture in general, and it should be because the results, which I think should have been common sense, but I guess it's not common sense because a lot of people in her pediculture and who work with snakes don't seem to think that snakes have much cognitive ability or that enrichment is very important for them. And that's why this paper is very significant because the key points of this paper, environmental enrichment alters the behavioral profile of rat snakes. It was by Berghart and Almley in 2006. Okay, back to our video. The key points of this paper, which again is entitled Environmental Enrichment Alters the Behavioral Profile of Rat Snakes, are that housing conditions can affect the behavior of captive snakes and produce improvements in behavior similar to those seen in mammalian enrichment studies. Basically, almost every mammalian enrichment study that's ever been done shows that animals raised in environmentally sparse habitats or 
environmentally deprived areas have reduced cognitive function as compared to those animals that are raised in environmentally complex situations. This study on rat snakes showed the exact same thing. It also showed that in a problem solving task, snakes housed in the enriched environments exhibited shorter latencies to the goal as compared to snakes housed in standard conditions. That means that when the snakes were put in this problem solving task, the environmentally enriched snakes took a less amount of time to complete the task than the snakes that were housed in the standard conditions. And then in an open field task, enriched condition snakes habituated more quickly than standard snakes with repeated testing. What this is saying is in one of these open field tasks, the environmentally enriched snakes, oh, excuse me. Okay, Tau Ceti is in rare form today. And his behavior is a result, I guess, of all of the enriched living that I've been giving him since he arrived here. He thinks he can just do whatever he wants. He has no fear. And he's decided that this whole room is his. I let him out the other day and I was gone for just a minute or two and came back and he had traveled all the way from his enclosure across to the other side of the room and was exploring behind these enclosures. <sighs> I don't even know where I left off there. This paper also brought up the key point that in a discriminant function analysis, all of the snakes were correctly assigned to their appropriate housing treatment groups. And that was based on the response of each of the snakes in individual behavioral tasks. So at the end of this test, basically what they did is they mixed up all the snakes together and then they tested each one and based on the results of the, each of the snakes individual tests they were able to place them correctly in either the standard group or the environmentally enriched group well, overall this paper illustrates that enriched condition snakes were more behaviorally adaptive than the snakes raised in standard conditions <sighs> all right I'm glad that we got all of that covered and I hope that you did have a look at that paper. I'm going to be writing a blog in regards to this soon and I will have this paper listed as well as a whole bunch of other related papers, but I am gonna also put some links to reptile brains and reptile enrichment studies in the link to this video description. I wanna just end by talking a little bit about our behavioral observations here at Behavior Education with the snakes that we're working with at our facility. And here we have seen that regardless of what the snake species is, snakes that arrive here as babies or as juveniles, maybe less than a year old, but not over a year and a half old, who we place into very environmentally complex habitats and place in environmentally complex situations, habituate to handling, feeding, training, and exercise options more quickly and with less apprehension to begin with than those who have arrived here from standard or deprived conditions as older juveniles or adults. Now, Tao said he arrived here when he was just seven weeks old, and he has had a plethora of environmental enrichment even while he was in quarantine. And so I think some of the behavior that you're seeing from him in this video illustrates his outgoing nature, his resiliency, and his eagerness to exercise and explore. And had he been raised in environmentally deprived conditions or environmentally standard conditions, well, I don't know what his personality would be like now. I just know that he was raised in a lot of environmental complexity here and that he gets to participate in a lot of complex activities here outside of his enclosure only when he chooses to. We don't force him out of his enclosure to participate in activities and that's why during some of our Super Dwarf Sunday videos he's not present in the video or I'm showing footage from a different day because if he doesn't want to come out, if he doesn't choose to come out when I open the door, I don't force him out. TC lately, the last two weeks, ever since his last ecdesis cycle, has been extremely outgoing and wanting to come out a lot and exploring way past his enclosure, which is new behavior for him. But I have to believe that the way he's been raised over almost the past year has helped him build that confidence that he needs in order to do that. I wanna thank everybody so much for watching. Until next time, 
please remember to always be kind and love your animals.